So again, welcome everybody to this 10th webinar this morning, uh, a webinar that will talk about the SEN approach on addressing environmental issues in standardization. Uh, we uh, realized this uh, webinar in cooperation with DIN, so we have the pleasure to have a speaker from our German SEN member um, today. Uh, but before we start, uh, let me maybe introduce myself. As usual, I will be moderating the webinar in the background today. My name is Els, and uh, one of the things I'm working on are the webinars, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit of the back, uh, the housekeeping rules. Uh, as usual, you will be all muted during the presentations. So we would like to invite you to use the Q&A panel of this webinar to enter your questions. You are many persons connected this morning, so we might not have the time to reply all your questions. But as usual, we promise you to make a Q&A report available via the websites afterwards. Should you be on Twitter, please feel free to talk about this webinar and about the topic, of course, with the hashtag 1010 webinar. So let me take a moment now to introduce the speakers of today. Uh, my colleague Andrea Nam, who is Project Manager Energy and Living uh, at the Sensen Management Center, together with Sebastian Lenz um, from DIN, who is the Project Coordinator of the DIN Environmental Project Protection sorry, Help Desk and the Secretary of the SABE and his team. So uh, thank you very much, Andrea and Sebastian, for uh, this presentation this morning. The floor is yours. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome. And uh, I'm very pleased to see that so many of you are interested in, uh, in the environmental aspects of, of the standardization. Uh, I'm Andrea, and uh, together with Sebastian, we'll uh, explain to you uh, why and how it's important to address the environment uh, in standardization. So my share will be to explain to you the why, and Sebastian will uh, explain to you the how uh, following when I explain the why. Next one, please. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so the standardization is uh, an environment we consider very important. Why? Because standards may have an impact on the environment. What kind of impact standards can have? It can have a positive impact, for instance, if we develop standards that help to detect pollution, uh, for instance, methods for air quality characterization or collection and reuse of, of waste, they can all have a positive impact on the environment. But uh, there are also standards which have no impact on the environment because I'm, I'm saying this because some, some technical committees ask me that their standards always have an impact on the environment, not necessarily, depends on the standard and your assessment. So for instance, a standard ergonomic principles of, of a specific equipment may not have impact on the environment or a software product quality requirements may not have impact on the environment, obviously. But standards may have also a negative impact on the environment. For instance, if uh, uh, there could be some pollution happening and the standards have no measures to prevent uh, pollution, for instance, uh, some leakages or um, emissions in the environment. So the objective um, of this uh, work is to prevent and minimize the negative impacts and to set criteria methods to be used with the purpose of protecting the environment. Next slide, please. So um, we always ask the question why and whether there is some extra work to do. Yes, there is, I can confirm, but there are also benefits. Yes, I can confirm because not everybody is always convinced about that. And uh, first let's think about when you are a citizen because you are professional, but on the other hand, uh, on the other side, uh, but at the end of the day, you are a citizen. So if you're asking these questions, is the clean air and not having respiratory system problems, is this important to me? Are clean lakes and rivers where to swim important to me? Uh, to have clean drinking water, to have clean forests where to go in the weekends, or not having harmful chemicals in products? If the reply to all these questions is yes, then it's a, a conclusion that it's important to address environment aspects and standards. Next slide, please. But obviously this was about when you were uh, a citizen, but uh, as a professional, I will give you five reasons why you should uh, consider environment aspects and standards. So first is the benefits. Um, we used to think uh, that uh, the environment and benefits, they never go hand in hand, but this is wrong because there could be plenty of benefits. I give you here the example. So uh, we can have environment and health benefits. How? Because um, standards that 
address environmental aspects, they can have reduced impact from waste and emissions, and they can have reduced demand for resources and resource efficiency uh, could be taken into consideration. And they could uh, create a healthier environment by uh, reduced medical treatment costs. So all in all, we'll have a cleaner and safer environment. But it can have also economic benefits. It can lead to saving on resources and such reducing the costs of cleaning. The polluted environment or treatment of waste uh, will not cost money. So the unnecessary legal costs could be avoided or fines for non-compliance as well. And businesses become more attractive if they ensure customers, investors, that they are taking action for protecting the environment. So all in all, this will lead to a better market access and of course, new business opportunities. Next slide, please. But there are also other benefits. We have a policy context. We have a world we, we live in. We have to take into consideration the approaches. So if you look at the international context, I'm sure that you're all aware of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 SDGs, uh, which were adopted by all United Nations members uh, back in 2015. And this is a universal call to action to end poverty, to protect the planet, to ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. And this success depends on all stakeholders, including the standardization uh, community. So we definitely need to take action because these 17 goals will help the address the, the global challenges and not only uh, uh, to fight poverty, inequality, but also to address climate change problems, environmental degradation. Next slide, please. Continuing with the policy context, yes, there's also a European policy context, which is um, high impor very important for, to us. Uh, the, the European Green Deal was adopted in end of 2019 by the European Commission, and this is Europe's growth strategy where environmental, economic and social sustainability go hand in hand. Um, the aim of the Green Deal is to mainstream sustainability in all EU policies and to implement the UN agenda and the SDGs. So what will result? The same thing, as I said before, a cleaner, healthier, sustainable, resilient environment and a sustainable, resilient and growing economy. And the relevance of standards is specifically mentioned here. So because the EU plans to set new standards for sustainable, for sustainable growth and the Green Deal also is committed to, will, to make consistent use of standards. So it's important we have the right standards in place and it's the right time. Next slide. And how about Sensenelec? So in Sensenelec, since 2019, sustainability and environment became a priority. We issued a declaration, standards with trust, basically to support policymakers and say that we can help the European policy objectives implementation. You can see the fifth call is the implementation of the SDGs. Next slide, please. And now we have um, the new Sensenelec strategy adopted in November uh, last year. And I just highlighted that the sustainable development uh, is mentioned in the vision, it's mentioned in the mission of our strategy, and also is among the five strategic goals we want to achieve. So you can see specifically mentioned in the first section already that combating climate change is very important to us. And because um, we will, uh, standardization should be recognized as critical catalyst for the sustainable development. So we we'll have to have a coordinated view on that. Next slide, please. So um, how um, we support your work. We have um, the strategic advisory body on environment uh, available to help the technical committees in their work. This is a platform of exchange, this body. Uh, on environment a topic open to all CEN and CENELEC members, partners, stakeholders, and also technical committees. And one of their specific role is to support technical committees in addressing environmentally related issues in the standardization work. Uh, Sebastian will further elaborate on that. Next slide, please. So um, this is just to uh, give an idea about the action plan of the strategic advisory body for 2021-2023. So uh, the focus will be um, during these three years, the circular economy, climate change, toxic free environment and biodiversity. You can see how this is related to the objectives of the Green Deal. And uh, the SABE, what they want to achieve is to identify uh, new needs and gaps in standardization, in particular related to these uh, priority topics, but not limited only to this. 
and also to provide a good European coordination of actions needed um, related to international standardization environment, which are not covered by SNTC. So SABE does not want to duplicate work, it's rather there to support, to coordinate and to help you to have a more coordinated view uh, of the environmental aspects in standardization. Next slide, please. So inside the strategic advisory body, uh, there's also the environment that helps us to support you. This is a service to promote and support integration of environment aspects in the European standards. And it's available for all ten, uh, technical committees on the hyperlink. If you click on the hyperlink, you can um, send an email to the environment that helped us, but you can uh, find more information on the environment that has helped us on the website. Uh, we did not put much link to the website uh, in this presentation because uh, it's not like they are updating their website and the new website will come out in the beginning of, of July. We want a joint website for Sentinelec, but uh, you will be easily find uh, this information on the new website as well. So I will give the floor to Sebastian to explain uh, the how. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much, Andrea. So I will continue with the actual topic of today, which is the SEN approach on addressing environmental issues. Um, this document was elaborated by Zabe, the one, the committee which um, Andrea just presented, and it was approved in 2010. And recently a revised version has become available, which is basically the reason why we have this webinar today. Um, in the revision, the title was changed, so it's now called SEN Approach on Addressing Environmental Issues in Standardization. And there were, of course, many other changes. Um, I just want to highlight two of them. One is about the procedures on data collection and reporting, because this is somehow also relevant for the TCs, how this is done. And stronger emphasis is now given on communication. But uh, please note that there will be also um, a, a more comprehensive revision very soon, or at least it's the intention to have this. And this um, should then lead to a common then and Senelec environmental approach. But what actually is the environmental approach? Well, it, it has, um, Andrea has already described potentials of standardization to support environmental protection and, and the importance of, of addressing environmental aspects and standards. And that's basically where the, the environmental approach comes in. Oh, sorry, that was wrong. Um, and it it's, has a key objective to put in place a general framework to promote and ensure a better inclusion of environmental aspects in European standards. And this is done by systematically addressing environmental issues. And in that way, as Andrea has explained, um, negative environmental impacts can be avoided by the standards addressing, for example, products or services, or that um, potentials for supporting environmental protection with standardization can also be identified. This is of course um, most relevant for those technical bodies and sectors where there are significant environmental impacts but the approach also aims at raising awareness to all technical bodies. And this is done by defining these five elements. The one is about priorities and setting of priorities. Um, Zabe is responsible to set these priorities and the approach defines and gives some guidance and procedures how Zabe should do it. One example for a priority in the past was chemicals and that led finally to the publication of the SEM guide 16 on addressing chemicals and consumer product standards. And another priority was circular economy and that led to the, the topic group where all or where many TCs um, um, which are doing work related to circular economy are represented and coordinate with the work. So if your TC is also working on top uh, on circular economy and is not yet involved, uh, make sure to contact Saab to see whether cooperation is needed. Then there is one uh, element about data collection and reporting. This is obviously needed because when when you want to set priorities, when you want to involve the right stakeholders and committees, you have to have the information, and this 
procedure is something which changed in the newer version. The new procedure um, means that the environmental help desk, the EHD, will request TCs to provide input. But this is, don't worry, this is not going to happen on a regular basis. This is only done when, when Zabe identifies a need for certain data, for specific data. So you, you will only get requests when there's the real need for data and information and activities of your TCs. Another element is support, and there are different kinds of support, generic support, like there's a very variety of, of guides and checklists and training courses available, which help to addressing environmental issues in general. And there's also tailored support. Um, and this tailored support is, is then specific to sectors or technical bodies or specific to environmental issues. There can be, for example, uh, tailored trainings for certain sectors. Um, and another example here, or again, the SEMGUIDE 16 is a good example because it's for a specific issue and also for a specific sector, the consumer product sector. And as mentioned before, communication is also given more emphasis in the revised version. And this is acknowledging because uh, of the importance of mainstreaming awareness um, and ma maintaining awareness um, by regular communication. And many of you have surely noticed that there are regular webinars on environmental topics recently in the last couple of years. And this is also something which, which Zabe wants to support, though so they are um, contributing to the, the planning and preparation of these webinars so they can be held by CCMC effective, effectively. And of course, there are also a var variety of other uh, ways to communicate their newsletters, brochures, websites. You will see uh, an overview later on. And finally, there are also the so-called mandatory elements, which are, let's say, certain obligations for the TCs, not to, to add an administrative burden, but rather to, uh, to ensure that awareness on environmental issues is raised and, and maintained. One of these addresses uh, the, the business plan. So the business plan in the meantime is optional. This had not been the case when the original approach was adopted. But now, even now, if, if a TC decides to have a business plan to, to elaborate a new, new one or to maintain it, then it should, of course, follow the rules on TC business plans. And, and one of these is that uh, it should include a, uh, a clause on environmental issues. And in this clause, the TC uh, describes or yeah, describes the key environmental issues of the TC's work and topic and how they want to address it in the work. A similar requirement exists for the new work item proposal forms and the formative decisions, because um, there the TC or the proposer has to detail or has to also select the, the, the relevant environmental issues and also how they should be addressed in this specific project. Uh, please note that the, the form is presently under revision and also the, these questions will slightly changed, change and, and there's also the intention to add in, a new question about sustainable development goals, similar to the form which some of you might know um, by ISO. And another obligation is related to the TC meeting agendas. So there has to be an, uh, an agenda item, environmental actions on the agenda. Of course, um, it will not be the case that every TC um, has something to discuss on environmental actions at, at every meeting. This depends a lot on the TC topics and, and what they are presently working on. But but keeping this agenda item will allow all the participants, the, the delegates from the NSBs, but also from, from stakeholder groups uh, to, to raise environmental issues, which might be very relevant and which might not have been raised if without this agenda item. So this is also uh, about keeping awareness and giving the possibility to address environmental issues. And finally, there's one last requirement about the title and scope of some TCs. 
that is about um, avoiding that a TC excludes, for example, environmental issues from its scope, although the TC drafts standards which have significant impact on the environment. So when, when a TC drafts requirements which have impact on the environment, then they should also take the consequences and take this into account and see that uh, this is acknowledged and considered in the standard. So finally, to, to summarize these uh, elements, so the purpose is not to, to add administrative burden, but rather to mainstream and systematically address environmental issues and to maintain awareness and to help the TCs to, to implement strategic thinking and planning when it comes to addressing environmental issues in their work. But will these elements really lead to systematically addressing environmental issues and standardization? Well, this depends a lot on the, the different actors and how they contribute, whether they, whether they work well together. And therefore, the SEN environmental approach also defines certain roles and responsibilities. There are, for example, the SEN strategic environmental committees. Um, Andrea has mentioned them already, the main, most important ones, Saabe and the Environmental Help Desk. Remember, Saabe is a FET working group, while the EHD is a service, it's a part of, of CCMC. But they are working closely together. And that's why I'm, I'm keeping them also together in this box. So you will see the different, different tasks here on the, in the box, which are basically tasks from Saabe but some of them are, are carried out by the EHD, which is then supervised by Saabe. And of course, a, base, a key role comes also to the SAN TCs and working groups. They are of course responsible for drafting the standards, but they are in the sense of the environmental approach. They are also responsible for taking into account the mandatory elements, the tools and guidance which exist. And of course, both groups interact Saba and EHD raise awareness, promote tools, and so on. And TCs give input to the, to the um, strategic committees, or if relevant, they, they participate in topic groups like the one on circular economy. And national standards bodies, of course, have, have the possibility to, to have similar activities like Saba on national level. They can promote tools, have national trainings, raise awareness, and they can also participate in in Zabe, which provides a platform for information exchange, so they can exchange best practice. And NSBs, of course, have a key role in, in ensuring a balanced stakeholder representation in the TCs, which are then drafting the standards. So they can also um, ensure that, that environmental expertise is available in the TCs. And finally, when we are talking about standardization, one, one key actor are, of course, the stakeholders themselves. These are the usual stakeholders, um, like consumer and environmental NGOs, industry, science, and so on. But in this context, um, I would also like to, to highlight the European Commission, which is um, a close cooperation with uh, and regular meeting with Saabe to ensure that, that um, Standardization also supports the needs from the European Commission and their initiatives. And now this, this picture shows quite well how the different actors interact with the common goal to produce green European standards, meaning European standards which take into account environmental um, aspects and which support environmental protection and related policies and and other political initiatives, legislation. And so you see that the, a key role lies with the TCs, which have at the end the, the decision, what, is, what are the actual contents of the standards? But um, as I mentioned, several guides already, and that there are several tools we've summarized on this slide, what, what, what are the most important guides there are there's, for example, the Sen Guide 16, which I mentioned before about chemicals and consumer relevant products. There had been a webinar some time ago, which is recorded, which you can still watch if you want. Then there are 
several guides, for example, on product standards and climate change adaptation testing standards. And some of, some of them have a checklist, which you can also download as Word files so you can easily work with them. And finally, there are also um, these, all these information are also available on websites. One is the website on Zen environmental approach, where you find also some of the guides. I'll just shortly show the, the environmental framework, which is a website basically from, from the environmental protection or environmental help desk from Zen. This is going to look different in the near future because um, websites are presently going, um, being revised. But just to give you an impression that, that there are for example, the newsletters from Zabe available, their approach, brochures, one recently published brochure is focusing on the public sector. And you will also find all the guides and also um, guidance and examples for, for certain sectors and the checklists, of the guides. But you also have all this information in the presentation itself. So yeah, here are the links. As else mentioned at the beginning, they might not work in a couple of weeks, but, but we will make sure to update and provide you with a, uh, an updated presentation when this is the case. So coming to an end, just to summarize the key takeaways of today's meeting. I hope that, that every one of you knows by now that standards can support environmental protection and related policies and legislation. And this also applies to standards not directly re related to environmental topics. So where you might not ex uh, expect this, so it's important to, to address this systematically to identify possibilities, even though uh, you would not expect them. And addressing sustainability, environment and climate change is a strategic priority for SEN and Senelec. This is well expressed in the SEN Senelec strategy 2030, just published recently. The environmental approach um, is basically the framework to support this and provides tools. And it's, it's important that all the actors really use it and apply it systematically because making the environmental approach work is a joint task of all actors. And yeah, last point, remember that, that the environmental approach is going to be revised very soon and the joint environmental approach for Sen and Selec is the aim. So we need contributions from, from the TCs, especially also from Senelec, because in Zaba, the representation in, of Senelec is quite limited because it was only extended to Senelec last year. So we are happy to, to stay in contact with you and also to, to answer any questions which you may have. <laughs>